color fresh worth the price? Absolutely. Hi everyone, um, I hope everything is okay. Hello SKD, uh, can someone tell me whether the, um, the sound is all good? But I can't really tell. Hi Yu Wang. I'm assuming that you can hear me, right? Should I just put it in the chat? Okay, turn the music down a bit. Yeah, if you didn't notice, this is the uh, this is my first time, so yeah, I'm not quite sure how this is gonna work out. It might be very well, it might be very bad. So so today in this video, I'm gonna be snapping the legs of the mechanical EXS. And uh, instead of wasting a lot of time in the stream to just like snipping parts of the runners, I thought I would do. I thought I would just like you know snip everything off the runners before the stream, which I'm really gl glad that I did because um, I spent like two hours just getting the parts off the runners for, of, just for the legs. So like. I'm, yeah, I'm just glad that I'm saving two hours in the stream and uh, instead I'll just put all the parts like organized it in like little bags So that I can just like pull the bags out and then just assemble part by part And I hope everyone is having a good night or, or day depending on uh, where you are Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to just ask because, you know, it's my first time. I don't really know what I'm supposed to talk about. So it'll make it easier if you like, have some questions. SKD asks if I have built any mechanical kits in the past. And I have, yeah. I have done the Penelope and the GPO2. Um, I would say the Penelope was pretty terrible in terms of uh, instead of just like snapping it, because like literally nothing would fit. And that's like quite the common thing for early mechanical kits. But the GPO2 was much better. But then it was still like, you know, a bit on and off in terms of the quality. Hang on a sec. <laughs> Got my cat shouting. Stop. Yeah, I'll say that like one of the worst things about mechanical kits is uh, their hands are always like really terrible like they will always have like the fully movable fingers but then they don't have like you know one of those like taps thing on the palm like they don't have that so like you can't literally you literally can't hold anything with uh, with their hands 
So it just sucks a little bit because、um, especially for the GPO2, like obviously if you wanted to like hold the bazooka, but there's like no way you can get the hand to like be in position. So that's say、like、one of the biggest downsides about、uh, mechanical kits. And the、um, another thing is、um, it could be taken as like a good thing or a bad thing, but、uh, there's just like so many tiny parts in their kits. And I've just looked at the、uh, this EXS, and I hope you can see this clearly. But just look at the base; they're like. I think they're like literally more than a hundred parts just for the base alone, and like look at all these like tiny little bits. There's like one part each in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it's like twenty parts here already, and you have to do it like six times, and it's just like a bit ridiculous. And that's also、um, why I am not really sure if I want to paint it or not. Because when I build kits, I like to snap snap build them first. But、uh, for mechanic for mechanical kits, it's quite difficult to、um, disassemble it once it, once you have it snap built. Mostly because some of the parts you just have to glue, and、um, yeah, you know, once you glue everything, and you just like can't disassemble it. Hi Nehru. Yeah, I hope I hope the sound is better now. Yeah, just let me know if there's like any problem with my sound. So um, yeah, I think we should just start doing it. Like I said, like I've I've been、uh, you know organizing these parts for the past two or three hours, just so that they are、like, organized in each sections. So you know, each part I get the parts out and then build, and then I can like get the other back out, that kind of thing. Yeah, Ultron sets. I've looked at mechanical kits, but they are fairly expensive. It's nice to have the insights about the hands, etc. That you have. Yeah, that's the.、Um, that's also a problem for mechanical kits. They're just so damn expensive. Like granted, you get a lot of stuff with it, but you're basically paying like Bandai price. So、um, yeah, you get you get a lot more stuff, but you're also paying a higher price as well. But then the quality is not really close to、uh, Bandai at all. And the、uh, yeah, the quality in terms of like third party is is pretty good, but it can be sometimes really annoying. Like sometimes you just have to glue the things in. And yeah, this is also why I'm decided to do a stream. Because you know, first I'm not sure if I'm、uh, painting it at all, so I just want to like have some, like instead of waiting for, instead of if if I wanted to paint it, I'll have to like, you know, work on it for like five months before putting anything out. I just thought I'd like, you know,、um, put some content out, and then I can decide later on if I want to paint it or not. But、yeah, if you if you guys have any questions,、uh, like just anything in general, you can just ask me. But、um, I'm quite surprised to see there are, like quite a few people watching. So、uh, yeah, that's a good. Oh man, that's a good thing. I didn't put the air、uh, the wires in. It's a bit annoying.
See, like this. It's like you need to coordinate your movement in terms of like putting things in, because like you put one thing in, one thing falls out, and then you put the the other thing in, another thing falls out, that kind of thing. So it might seem quite simple steps, but then like just putting it together is already a challenge. And also like one thing about the LEDs, I would uh I'll show you. The LEDs, they come in like a bunch and they're not the same thing, they have like different numbers. Uh, let me see. So they're like LS 01, 02, 03, 04 and they're like all bunched up together. It's like which one is which then? Like you gotta figure that out, which is a bit annoying. Sounds like building any Evangelion kit. Like, I, I've not built any of uh, those kits before, so... Maybe tell me what... What that's like then. Yeah, mechanical kits, they are... I don't know, you build it... Oh, I got my focus is out. Like, mechanical kits is, uh, is a challenge to take on. Uh, especially in the earlier kits, because I remember in the uh, Penelope... Like, there's like so many mistakes with the manual, like, in terms of like, the steps. Because they, they give you like uh, one, two, three, four, that kind of thing. Um, of like, you know, do do one first and then do two and then do three. And sometimes the numbering are wrong. So it just be like hilarious because you would like assemble something. And then actually the, the manual is wrong. And then you have to like disassemble it. And then do the next step before the, the step before. It's like a bit stupid. Like I, I think... If I remember correctly, the GPO2 is is fine. But like, yeah, they they've improved quite a lot like uh, lately, which is good. Yeah, camera is all focused. It should be okay now, right? Yeah, I hope that like the stream is slightly less uh, boring because you don't have to watch me uh, snipping everything out from the runners. Like I said, if you weren't here before, like I literally spent like three, two or three hours just getting the parts out for the legs. Masb115 says, I've built the mechanic core Penelope and that was a nightmare to build. Yeah, that, yeah, agree. <clears throat> it's the reason you pass on this kit, but they've like improved quite a lot recently, so that's why I was so hyped about it. But to be honest, it was quite annoying that this kit, um, went up for pre-order in 2019 so it like basically took them three years to get this kit out which can be quite frustrating and am I planning on building the Rodam's GP03 uh, which one because they have the um, 
Oh, GP03 is in the... Um, which one did they pull out? They put the uh, Dendrobium, right? Yeah, that was with the Dendrobium, isn't it? Um, yeah, I'm not quite a fan of Rodam's uh, design, actually. Like, I, for some reason, I really like mechanical kits, like, just the look of them. But Rodam's is a bit too... I don't know, a little bit weird for me. Uh, Brian Schaffer says, do you have a dream kit? Uh, I don't think I have a dream kit. I just like appreciate really cool stuff like what whenever I come across them. Like I don't, you know some people they like, you know, see a Barbatos, they'll be like, oh, I got to have it like no matter what kit it is, I just, I do, I just have to like have it. I don't have that kind of feeling. Ultron says, I'm still waiting on my Essex Studio Barbatos upgrade V2 and the 160 version to arrive would be my, would be, uh, would be my first resin kits. You mean the MG Barbatos that I, I did? That kit is, um, uh, I don't know, it's a bit on and off. Because Essex Studio, they, they really... They really suck at doing like smaller scale kits. So there were like a lot of like unclear details and like stuff in my uh, MG Barbatos racing that I had to like sand and rescribe. Hi there, Jason Combs. Good to see you here. Yu Wang says I'm test fitting the Stickler Studio SD Kisatria. Yeah, that, that kit looks really good. It's just, um, yeah, I can't justify the cost of these uh, resin SD kits. They're like so expensive. Jeremy says my favorite of the mechanical designs definitely has to be a Siegler. Yeah, I really like that kit as well, but like, I got into mechanical after after that kit has been released so and as you know like if you don't get it when it's out like you just can't get it anymore but they um they actually did like a reprint in the into the red version not long ago oh my what am i doing I don't know if you can tell, like, streaming, like, reading the comments and snap building at the same time is quite difficult. Like, I really, uh, I really, um, appreciate, like, streamers <laughs> after having done this now. Yeah, Jason, I've, I, I saw your uh, Kisatria binders. They look really good. Like it was a really, really smooth paint job and stuff. So well done. Yeah, you with Barbatos, yeah, you have to get everything. Yeah, I looked at the um, the 160 scale Barbatos. It looks, it looks good, but like, it's just a bit too edgy for me like i really like the aesthetic of the uh, of the mg the like subtle curves here and there but like the pg is too angular uh, in some ways also no i don't know if you guys know uh, recently sh studio released a pre-order for the 160 scale Sinanju conversion kit and uh, 
it is uh, just a really good looking kit but uh, I don't know if you know because uh, I talked to the uh, the guy who designs those kits like um, GM Dream and he told me about this kit like last year and he said it was gonna be about one to two thousand uh, RMB But then like now that is up for pre-order, it's gone up to 3,180 And I'm just like There's no way I can justify that because On top of that you have to get a PG Unicorn uh, as base And then with shipping and stuff that's gonna be uh, Probably four, 450 quid or if not 500 For that price, I, get, I can get like a ridiculous uh, G system kit, you know. Though it looks really good, but it's just too much for me. Yeah, 3D printing is the future of resin kits, I do agree. Um, in fact, most of the resin kits are done... What the? Most of the uh, resin kits nowadays are 3D designed and then printed. And then they do the casting afterwards. It's just like, it's just a lot more convenient. Uh, you know, like if you're doing like mirror parts, so like like shoulder parts, we have to like do it two to four times. Instead of doing like by hand, you can just print the other, print the other half, just mirrors, you know. It helps with the quality and the ease, ease of it, really. Jeremy asks, any thoughts on the 5 star story kits by Folks? Um, Folks do the plastic uh, kits, right? What? Sorry, my cat is interrupting. Yeah, five, uh, Folks do the plastic kits and I've, I've looked into the resin kits uh, as well. They, yeah, I really like the designs actually. Uh, if you have seen the cupola that I did, uh, I did mention that um, GM Dream sort of deliberately put some five star story sort of design cues into the cubelay. And of course, originally there were already some uh, influences because it's uh, designed by the same guy. But yeah, I, I, I would like to get into five star stories, but uh, I, I don't know. This is too many things to do at the moment. This is getting really frustrating. See everything just falling off. Hi Andrew, good to see you here. Masby115 says I'm looking forward to the PG Saku 1 conversion. That's the uh, Saku Sniper one, right? That does look like a good kit. One thing I really don't like about SX Studio, you know, like I do a lot of their kits, but ever since their first PG Goof flight type came out, like they've just jacked up their prices like way too high. Like they know they're popular, so like they just like really increase the price. Cause I think when I got my Goof Light type, it was like quite cheap. But then, like once it's got released and like it was been popular, they jacked up the price like twenty percent or something. And ever since, like all their PG kits or like all their new kits are like super expensive. Game Boy Customs, hi Harry. Thank you for tuning in. Oh yeah, and of course like like typical mechanical. 
you get like a back load of uh, nuts and bolts and screws and uh, sometimes it's quite annoying because the length is not long enough so like they're kind of useless sometimes do I have a discord no I don't uh, because I don't know I just I just can't manage too many platforms at the same time because I have a Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And that's already quite a lot for me. Yuang asks if I get them from their Taobao shop directly. Yeah, yeah, I do get them from the Taobao shop directly. And even then, it's so expensive. And I know, I know about the U.S. Um, retailers selling resin kits. They just like they just jacked <laughs> the price way up. Like I think I saw what a new Gundam conversion kit for like three hundred dollars, right? That's just ridiculous. Gundam Hunters, uh, the Gundam Hunter asks where can you even find mechanical kits? I usually can only find the recent ones on eBay. Yeah, you, you just have to got to know about Taobao. Uh, Taobao is basically... They're basically like Amazon in China. And all the uh, resin uh, studios, they sell their stuff on there. So that's where you will find everything, really. Where in Taobao did I get them? Um, there are like a few shops that sell them, so... But the key is like, you, you pre-order it when they announce it. So that was way back in uh, 2019. Yeah, that's the thing, and if you want to, if you want to use Taobao, you have to search in uh, Chinese. So that can be a barrier for some people. Yeah, funny story about that uh, Kisatria. Like, if you're on Facebook in the, the Gundam groups, you would know the um, the designer and. He's been doing really well with the um, with the kit, and naturally it got pirated into uh, <laughs> into China. Like there was like a one studio selling a one forty eight scale or something of the exact same kit without the permission. But uh, but I think I think they have stopped doing it now. But yeah, it's just hilarious, like there's no copyright law in, in China and people just like steal everything <laughs> if they can. What's up? Hello. So we're about half an hour in and <laughs> we barely made a dent. What do you want? Huh? Do you want to come up? 
Uh, I'm talking to my cat, by the way. <laughs> I don't know if you can see him. He's very, um, he's very cheeky. And he's going for my food. <laughs> Go away. So far the, uh, the quality is pretty alright and uh, I haven't had any problems yet. Uh, as soon as I said that like this part came loose. to glue this, I don't know. Yeah, Taobao can be quite hard to work around. And they have a w really weird thing, uh, if you... Because I think they do ship directly to the US. But if you select a, a US address, they will add like sales tax on top of it, which is weird. But then same thing um, happens to us in the UK when when we use uh, AliExpress. There's like an automatic twenty percent tax added when you check out. which is annoying. Uh, of course I've done it off sequence. But yeah, thanks again for everyone for coming in. This is my first stream ever, so... Quite exciting, I guess. I don't know if I'm doing a good job or not. But I can tell you I'm having a really hard time <laughs> building and engaging with you guys. Because like, I can't really like talk and built at the same time. I need to like focus really hard. 
Taobao is still only in Chinese? I think so, yeah. But you can use like Google Translate, I think. See this part, there's like a bit of fitting issue here. The peg is just too small. Uh, I mean too big. It's one of the things that you have to get used to when you're building third party stuff. Have to get used to this. But fitting wise is much better than the other EXS that I've done. You know the the bus. Man, that was atrocious. Oh, nice. Thank you, Gundam Hunter, uh, Yu Wang, and Ultrans. Yu Wang says he's learning a lot from my videos. Thank you. That's the thing, though. Like, there are quite a lot of resin builders, but most of them they don't show like the process. They just show like the unboxing and then like they show like a few seconds of painting and then like the final product that kind of thing and and even some people you know some resin uh, channels they do like kind of tutorial but not in english so i thought i'll just you know help the community a bit doing my uh Doing whatever I could. And of course, you guys know uh, Frost the Snow. They do good work as well. But they don't really upload that much anymore. Because um, Sharon had a, had a kit. Had a kit. Or they both had a kit, I guess. They both have a kit now. And man, like. I, I know quite a lot of, like that like parent model is like it's just hard to balance time sometimes yeah and i have a cat which can be annoying sometimes but most of the time really nice do you guys have any pets hello Ultron says, I'm chill to watch, it's a nice vibe. Yeah, I'm, I'm just like not really energetic, I guess. Uh, on to the next step. Like we are 40 minutes in and I've done three steps. <laughs> I mean, it would be much quicker if I didn't stream at the same time, but I'm really enjoying it. I just hope that you're not finding it boring. Daniel Jensen says no more Twitch streams. I don't have Twitch, so I'm not sure what you're on about. 
but yeah, I'm um, the reason why I'm not doing Twitch is it's just a bit annoying to like because you know my most of the people are on YouTube, you know most of the viewers are on YouTube, and if you have to like redirect people, it's just it's a bit difficult, isn't it? You have a ton of dust bunnies in your apartment. <laughs> my cat tries to get my parts while they're drying, says the Gundam Hunter. Yeah. Actually, my cats, I don't think they do. But you know when you have pets and you lo and when you lose parts? Like you just become really paranoid. You're like, did they eat it or not? But I think uh, cats are smarter than dogs. Uh, they don't just eat anything. So I'm glad that I don't have a dog. Um, speaking of the devil, what's up? Jason said. I agree, JL. You're one of my favorite builders on YouTube. I always look forward to your builds and reviews. Thank you very much. Like, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, d of course, I put a lot of effort into it. Um, but like, I'm not one of those fiddy. Uh, I'm not one of those people who like. I don't know, like. You know, do clickbaity stuff and like flashy things to to get views. Like if, if things do well, then they do well. If they don't, they don't. And uh, there's really not much point. Like views on YouTube, like there's not much point into getting loads of them because like there's virtually no way you can get like paid well by doing resin kits on YouTube and like just Gunpla in general like there's, there's no way you can like live off just doing Gunpla uh, uh, unless you're like Studio G or like Mecha Gaikotsu But um, yeah, I really, I really admire Studio G. Like, he just like magically appeared out of nowhere, and like he's like probably the most popular Gunpla YouTuber out there. What the hell is this? Mac Rawling says pets and kids leave little time for building indeed how am I fitting Jason says we have two white cats and that they are gorgeous, yeah. I really love cats. Just they're very low maintenance, isn't it? Like you don't have to walk them twice a day. What the So like for some reason I can't fit this in. So I just have to like trim the pecs a little bit shorter. Much better. Deb Shall Burn says I'm 42 minutes late. How's the mechanic core build? Is it is it as hard as the other ones? Uh, define older because um, 
the older ones are really bad and this one is much better but it's still not like bandai quality of course see like these two things won't fit together i just don't know why Gundam Hunter asks, what do you do for a living? Uh, that's quite a personal question, but I'll be... Um... Oh, there we go. Well, basically, I do a little bit of um, commissions. That helps a lot. And I also run like a little shop in the UK. Selling bits and bobs related to Gunpla. And um, I just get like mostly self employed. Well, I am self employed because because of COVID. Not that I had COVID, just like you know, lockdown and stuff. And when that happened, I just had to figure out a way to live, really. pretty fake but um yeah I won't go too much more into it Jason says I'm glad that I'm glad you did that recent butts review helped me dodge the bullet <coughs> yeah you're welcome um I mean I wouldn't have uh, minded if it was much cheaper because you know like quality only becomes a, a talking point depends depending on the, the price point because no one complains like if a kit is really cheap but then this kit is like for some reason more expensive than the other bus not by the same company but I you know that uh, Seta and Sinanju bus, they are like really amazing. But the EXS bus is like twice the price in re uh, retail price. And I just like, that's just unacceptable. Like if, you, if you're paying twice as much and get like half the quality, I'm just like... Studio G is a pretty sick. Um, Deb Shelburne says Studio G is a pretty sick builder. He also teaches me a lot of his viewers. Yeah, I agree. I like what he's doing. I just uh, maybe unpopular opinion, but I just don't like how he I, I don't know his image, I guess like his his whole thing is like um Oh, it's hard to explain. Like he's he's. I'm not saying he's pretending, but like maybe, it's just like he's like trying to make himself seem sort of extraordinary. Uh, yeah, I'm not explaining it very very clearly. But yeah, people love him like like a cult, and I, I'm just like, like he's good, but like, to make a relig religion out of him, you know. Yeah, I'm sure he's a great guy, uh, and. 
Like, no doubt he uh, puts a lot of time in his work and his brand and stuff. The Gundam Hunter says, I don't understand people like Mecha, Mecha Gaikosu, I think. How have you been building kits for years and have no desire to customize them as for? <laughs> I mean, I can relate though, like, if you like, have a full-time job and have kits, it's quite reasonable that you just don't have time to customize. I can I can relate because I used to do a lot of like scribing and like customizing my kids as well. But then like my Sasa B it took it took like two months to to do all the details before I could um paint it and it's just like a big waste of time. Well not a waste of time but like you feel like you could you could have done more different things than just focus on one thing for like four months including painting Like a lot of people just appreciate the building experience. They don't um they don't necessarily want to customize kits. Like you you know that like some some guy in Japan like holds a Guinness record for like having literally every single kit that Bandai ever put out. You know those those type of people. They just like building and just collecting, so it's a very different hobby, for sure. And same goes to like people who commissions. Like obviously, they don't want to customize; otherwise, they would wouldn't be commissioning. And speaking of that, Donald Sims asked, "Do I have a website for commissions?" Yeah, check out my website at jlgunplayuk.co.uk. It's a bit stupid having two UKs in, in the website. Uh, funny enough, uh, it was like a conscious decision to, to put the UK in my name. Because I, I know that like 100% people will ask like, where are you based? And I still get people who ask, you know, on my page, asking JL Gunpla, Gunpla UK, where are you based? And I'm just like, I'm glad that I put that in my name so that I don't have to explain to people every time. These two parts are not fitting together. That's nice. So things like that, sometimes you just have to like glue them. But if you glue them, uh, yeah, it's harder for the painting if you do want to later on. Like, like look at that, like, look at this hole and that part. Nothing. <laughs> it wouldn't stay in there. Uh, Dep Shaoburn says, Lamal, are you referring to the 800 hour Sasabi video? That shit was, was jokes indeed. Well, I was talking about my own Sasabi video that took three, four months making it, but I think you were referring to CUG. 
yeah, that's the thing like about him. I just, I think he exaggerates about things sometimes. Cause I remember watching like a live stream, and he said like he literally spends twenty two hours a day working, and I'm just like, there's no way someone can be awake 22 hours a day, let alone working 22 hours a day. And, and like that man has a family, has a wife and kids as well. And like, do you not eat? Do you not shower? Do you not, you know, have a shit? Like how, how can you do all those things in, in two hours a day and then sleep? Just like, He's just being like a bit ridiculous sometimes. And of course people will be like, wow, that's so impressive. <laughs> that's very unrealistic though, isn't it? Daniel Jensen says, Bits and Bob store, is this selling things on the web? Yep. I'm selling like mostly water slide decals, like metal parts, uh, mat work stuff, but mostly to the UK customers though, because um, I'm not good at making websites and like having different shipping rates for like different countries is just annoying. And mostly because I did that to just help people in the UK. Because things are really hard to find in the UK. Yeah, that's the thing like he has like a studio G has like a cult where like people would just buy his paints because it's studio G that kind of stuff I'm just like why like obviously like is it's a marketing thing like mainly mainly markets um like beginners who are into painting and stuff like he's really good at the business side of things for sure but yeah I have like a whole sort of oh, I don't know like negative negative thoughts about like balancing business advertisement and like actually having the skill So I don't know if you all agree, like nowadays it's all about marketing. It doesn't matter what you sell. You can sell like young shit. For, uh, and, you, and it can make you rich. <laughs> Mac Rawlings says JL is the only place to get more exotic bits in the UK. Not too exotic, I hope. Yu Wang says, I learn more from slower videos like yours, Jenik, etc. Yeah, I, I really like Jenik as well. Like, my god, like, the Korean modelists, they're so good. They're really good at, like, doing clean stuff. But it's weird though, because um, in Asia, people tend to do like clean paint jobs more. And then in the West, people tend to do weather weathering more. And it's like, it's not really an, an in between. It's quite interesting. And I know that people in the like Southeast, Southeast Asia, 
like Vietnam or like Thailand, they really like doing like full metallic paint job, which um, sometimes is a bit too much for me. And, and sometimes they go crazy with like the color separation. It's a bit too rich sometimes. Um, Brian Schaffer says he has more time, he has more hours in the day than I do. Yeah, maybe he has like 40 hours in a day so that he can build for 22 hours and have time for his families. Richie15 says, will this stream be uploaded on YouTube? I think. I think automatically when you stream, like after, after you stream, it just becomes available to watch again. I hope I've done everything right so far. Like, can you imagine? <laughs> If I miss something right now, I have to open all this stuff again. Deb Shaburn says, uh, "Yeah, a lot of people sell map works because they are really open about um, like wholesale pricing. Like you can literally just contact them saying, like, I want to sell your things, and then they will just give you a discount, which is nice." Hi, uh, Ju Ho Tan. I don't know if that's how you pronounce your name, but uh, yeah, I recognize you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for uh, everyone who's sticking with me. It has been an hour now. Whoa. Yeah, it's going quite quite quickly. So, um, I'm still in the early stages of this, of this part. Four fingers, yeah. I mean, it's not too bad, but sometimes things just don't don't stay together like like this one. It keeps coming back up. I think I'll just glue this here. <sighs> See. Jason asks, uh, I know you have a Facebook for your shop, but do you plan to make a group for builders? Yeah, like I said, like, I have too many things to manage. <laughs> yeah, I don't need another thing <laughs> for me to, to take care of. Yeah, a lot of people ask me to do uh, to make like a Discord group. Like, I, I don't really see the point. Like, I'm not into that kind of thing.
Does anyone have any questions for me? Yeah, Gundam Hunter said, sorry if that's too personal of a question, I was just curious because I have very little amount of time to build as a construction worker. Yeah, that's the thing. That's what I mean though, like some people just don't have time to customize things. But yeah, I've always wanted to, uh, well, I really like to build and I, I quite like to customize things. Uh, so I really try to just make it a job so that I can justify doing it. <laughs> just give me a second. But yeah, um, talking about the time and things. That's why I don't really customize kits anymore. I just do resin kits. Wait. Which um, I had like a problem before with like people who just do resin kits. I like, this is not really original. But then like, it takes a lot of effort to just, just customize things before you're painting. Like, um, what's the name? Uh, it's that Korean guy who, who likes, he does scribing. Oh man, he's like the best guy on YouTube. Um, man, my, my mind has just gone blank. Sorry, Daniel, I missed your question. Um, you asked, I really love the O. I love how big and chunky it is. Do you have any other kits you could recommend before a much smaller budget? You mean like the G system kits? I mean, they're all pretty expensive. And uh, it's not nice to work on. But um, they have I don't know, I have to look it up, but uh, you could message me if you want. I could give you some recommendations. Jun Ho Tan asks if I'm going to fully repaint this kit. I'm not sure. That's why I'm doing this stream, in case I'm not going to paint it. Then there will still be some content related to this kit. Because once you snap build this, it's just hard to disassemble it again with all the glue and whatnot in place. Not to mention it's gonna take three months at least. Like working every day. Can be too much. Donald Sims asks, how long have I been building? Been building since the early 2000s. Early 2000s. So, I remember the first kit was probably like the old MG Justice or the old MG Wing for a car. And I didn't know that they were snap built. So with like all the opening gimmicks, I glued them all in.
my niche as I'm going to attempt my first resin kit. At attempt my first resin kit. Unfortunately, it's Yujalan Sasabi conversion. Any advice? Yeah. Like Calvin said below, like Sasabi is quite complicated. So maybe get something simpler beforehand. Something like the Yujalan Saku will be nice. Ravi, Ravi Pa, yeah, there we go. Ravi, Ravi is amazing. Can't believe I forgot his name. He, he's the uh, reason that I did my Sasabi. Like, I guess, like many people, everyone saw his Sasabi series and they just started scribing the Sasabi. Yeah, that guy is just like crazy amazing. But the thing is though, like, how many people can justify spending half a year and not having painted anything? Daniel says, I meant big chunky mechs compared to other scale, or compared to their scale, so it could be 144. Do you mean like not even resin kit, or do you mean like just any kit in general? Calvin says, I have the chance to buy the GSB 135th RX78 II. Is it a good kit? I wouldn't know, but if if it's the one that I'm thinking, I really don't like that design. It's a really blocky thing. Like some of the uh, early G System kits, they're just ugly. Like, there's no other way around it. So chunky kits in general, which is my thing as well. So see if you're into... I mean, I'm, I'm mostly into like UC kits. So um, the Cassi and Penelope, they are really chunky. What else? Basically anything that I've done before. <coughs> like, um, if it's got like extra weapons and stuff, like I'll just be Im immediately into it. So I did the Yuja Land Yakushiki. Like just on its own, like I wouldn't be into it, but like with all the weapons and stuff, oh, it was so good. And uh, what else? Like even the wing as well. Like on its own, it's okay. But when we're done with the Snow White Prelude, it just like instantly makes it so much better. Like I don't know if you guys are the same. Like if if a kid has like heavy weapon system or like full armor thing, like I'm so into that kind of thing. So high new and new Gundam, HWS, very nice. Full armor Gundam, very good. <laughs> Full armor Thunderbolt, very good as well. Yeah, 
Okay, Brian Schaffer said, I think one of the better series is Godfinger's Nightingale series. Yeah, I really like that guy as well. He's, he's just crazy. Even with the, um, the unicorn that he designed and printed and stuff. That was crazy. Gundam Hunter says I'm about I'm, I'm, The Gundam Hunter says I'm about to get either the GSV Penelope or C or C and just got the Mercer Cassatria. Yeah, I really want to get the uh, Penelope or C as well. Uh, I did like a poll a few months ago that I I'll get either one of them as well. For the money, I think uh, Penelope is better value. But then most people voted for the Kasi. But man, I really like the Penelope. I don't know why people hate on it. I even got the uh, mechanical one, as you know. Juho Tan says, uh, check out Ray Studio. Yeah, Ray is also another crazy dude. He's won the um, GPWC one year. I, I don't know if it's just China or the final, but he's amazing. The Dev Shaoburn says, Did you see that Yu Jalan announced a model kit for a 100 high new that's based off a mix of the real grade and the resin conversion? Uh, can you give me a source? Because I don't think that would be a thing. Because. A lot of people have been speculating since the um, that plastic weapon kit that they put out that they are going to be doing full plastic from now on, but I don't think that's the case. This whole thing is really loose. <laughs> I'm not trusting it. Look at that. I think it's supposed to be something there. I'm, I've missed it, probably. something I'm missing but I'm, I, I'm not seeing it at the moment Looks like this thing is connected to something. 
but it's not telling me what in the manual. Don't know, has anyone built this kit in the stream? I'm not sure like why someone will watch it if they have built it though. supposed to be connected to these things but uh, they don't mention it in the manual very nice <laughs> this is one of the things that I I talk about like it, it's a challenge to do mechanical kits you have to um, figure things out on your own but I can't close it though <laughs> how do I close it back what the fuck So it would close nicely if they weren't con connected. But like, it's not very stable, is it? But then once you connect them, you can't close it. So what am I supposed to do? Tell me, Dill. Tell me. KD says the manual looks rather pro poorly to tell you where the connections go to. Yeah, I agree after this. <laughs> I think you're supposed to connect them, but also you're not supposed to connect them. So, uh, put some glue here as well. And by the look of this, I have to like do 10 streams or something, which I'm hoping it won't, won't be the case. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really work. Because this thing has to come down flat, but this one doesn't go all the way to connect it over there. So I think you're just supposed to connect it once you open it, so like that. But then once it's propped up, like, it doesn't close completely. Let's move on from uh, this step. It's taking too much time. I 
That's what I mean about uh, painting it though, like once you snap built it, it's pretty hard to paint it again. Oi! It's being bad now. So, uh, if you weren't here at the beginning, what I did was um, I snapped all the parts out beforehand so that you don't have to see me do that for like two hours on stream. Which by the look of things like just snapping it, it's gonna take a while. This part is quite interesting. There's like kind of, I think it's metal. Yeah, because it's cold. They, they do give you like metal parts to uh, reinforce some different sections, which is nice. But yeah, um,. That's why you see me uh, pulling out all these bags with like little parts. Uh, the kit doesn't come like that. It just, I snap them out before the stream. What the hell? This part is so stiff. <laughs> So what is everyone doing at the moment? I hope you're doing something interesting apart from uh, just watching this because it's not very... It's not particularly interesting. I just hope that I would like, you know, show people what it's like to build because on the whole of YouTube I think there's like one unboxing video and that's it so and I don't I don't think people actually well on YouTube anyway I don't think anyone shows building the mechanical kits most people just unbox it and then like do the painting video oh my god this is so tough Shall burn says studying statistical inference, getting ready for finals in about two weeks. What is that? Statistical inference. Inference. Jun Ho Tan says, 
do I usually get resin stuff directly from Taobao or from another third party reseller? Like Miss Sagan. Yeah, I, I get it directly because. Yeah, that's the cheapest way, isn't it? And like, especially on uh, Musagan, like, everything is just like 15% more expensive. And like, it's not like the process is any faster though, because they, they, they basically just order from China, ship them to, is it Malaysia or Singapore? So like the shipping cost isn't like any cheaper, but then you're paying on top of of that you're paying for the shipping from China to wherever country they are. Given two hypotheses on the probability of something, you reject one or the other. Is it kind of like like statistics in uh, maths then? Musagan is in Malaysia, yeah, I thought so. Man, this part is really annoying. <laughs> Gundam Hunter says I should build that 135th EXS Man <laughs> I don't know like I don't know anyone will have that kind of patience to, to go through it Not let alone like having that kind of money Deb Shaburn says is Yep, it's basically the second semester of statistics. Yeah, I did a little bit of like statistics in uh, A levels, and I never really got it. Cause basically, like you're, but well, it's only like in probability. Cause the whole point of uh, probability is like you're calculating the chance of s uh, the you know something that that's gonna happen or not and like you try to make sense of what's gonna happen but it doesn't really tell you much it's just a number so like so say so say if I flip a coin it's like 50% it's gonna be head but does it mean it's gonna be head? not really and like say if the chance of you tripping over in the next minute it's like one percent does that mean that you're not gonna trip over N not particularly like it tells you like a probability but it also doesn't tell you anything <laughs> if that makes any sense i'm just rambling sorry what i'm saying is like you you're trying to make sense of what's gonna happen but you still can't predict what's gonna happen anyway the um... EA gunplay is not bad yeah EA gunplay is also very good I'm having a hard time getting this part together
The Gundam Hunter says, how would you go about putting LEDs in a resin kit without clear parts? Mold your own part with clear resin? Um, you can like drill some holes, I guess. It depends like where you're gonna put the LEDs though, of course. Christian Throne says mechanic core looks so badass. Yeah, it does. But it's not that really glamorous when you when you're watching me like trying to snap things when they don't fit. Like I I don't imagine this being really entertaining. Oh, there we go. Deb Shelburn asks, did, did I study something in STEM in uni? No. Um, I did music in, in uni, so... But I did, t I did do uh, two A-levels in maths. I don't know, I, I don't think you're from the UK, so A-level is basically like... High school? I'm not sure if it's high school. You know like that kind of like sophomore and whatever thing that you have like in the US? So A level is basically like... Uh, middle school? So you're supposed to put a screw, like a bolt and nut as well, but like given how tight it is, I, sometimes you just don't need it. Yeah, Deb Sharburn says makes sense, no idea about uh, education in the UK. So we call it, um, A level is basically year 12 and year 13, and the year is basically like the year that that you're in education. So in uh, primary school it would be like year 1 to year 6. And then secondary school would be year 7 to 13. And then you go on to uni afterwards. What? Actually I think, so oh. Actually, I think sophomore is... Um, isn't it part of uni or something? Uh, Ju Ho Tan says, "So far, you haven't used a drill bit and sanding with mechanical. Yeah, usually you don't need uh, drilling with mechanical. They just like either really they're just really tight or really loose." I did have to uh, sort of enlarge the hole sometimes. Dev Shaoburn says music is phenomenal. 
as my other hobby aside from building. I uh, started learning music theory during the pandemic, love it. Yeah, music theory is uh, really important. I did, uh, I did classical music though, so it's uh, quite a different thing. Uh, yeah, I see. Yeah, so yeah, UK is a bit weird. We we have like seven years in middle school, whereas in America or like some other countries, you only have six. But we also do four years of uni, so like, basically we do one extra year of education before you're in the actual world. Jazz is awesome. I really like jazz because it's just... Um, I don't know, it's not very dramatic, but like... It's not like it's just, it's just like a good vibe and chill at the same time, but I also like big band sometimes. Like um, Thunderbolt series, like the Gundam series, like the music is just amazing. Christian says nothing wrong with that jazz is the foundation for everything. Not sure what you mean. <laughs> if you say like jazz is the foundation for music, I would definitely disagree. But like as a classical musician, like I really appreciate like the freedom you get by being able to play jazz. Cause you, cause all I all I do is uh, literally do what the note says, like note by note. Cause like it's the complete opposite for jazz. You just do whatever you want. Yeah, that's what I love about jazz uh, is that it is expressive without being dramatic. If you know what I mean. Because in, uh, in like classical music, moods are often like 
quite dramatic. You know, like, you know, most of the things in classical music about, like, deaths and, like, someone who died, that kind of thing. But, like, jazz is expressive in quite a different way. The Gundam Hunter says, do you always build one kit at a time or do you find yourself working on multiple projects at once? So that's the thing that I'm really um, conscious about, that I only have to do one kit at a time. <laughs> because if you if you have a lot of, I don't know if you know, but like, uh, I don't know if you experience it, but, but like if you have a lot of kits, Sometimes you get tempted to do, you know, like, because every time you have a project, there will always be like the fun part and the boring part. So if you don't make it a thing to go through the whole project, you never finish a thing. You just go on to the fun part of the next project and then go on to the fun part of the next project. So in that in that sense, I'm quite disciplined in um, forcing myself to go through all the boring stuff and finish the whole project first before I start another one. Again, in here, you're supposed to put a nut and bolt, but like, look at the connection, it's already so tight, it's kind of redundant to uh, put a screw in there. Oh, I've got a question for you guys. If you could uh, answer that for me, is, is how often do you want me to stream this build? Actually, I think I can do a. Actually, I don't know how to do that. Like, do a, po a poll? I can do a poll. Like, I just want to uh, get this build finished really, like, you know, if I do this every week, then it would like, it would take like three months to finish it, you know. And also I'm like currently having a holiday break from uh, painting, so. I'm not doing anything else apart from just building so I was hoping I could do it every day but of course like it depends if you guys want to do that if you, if you guys want to see it
But yeah, I appreciate you guys uh, still sticking around. It is almost two hours now, so it's kind of crazy. See, this is what I mean. Um, sometimes the uh, the length is not long enough for the uh, for the bolt. I I can't get it uh, screwing into the nut. Like, like, come on, man! Like, it's not screwing. Most people are voting for every week. I mean, that's not what I was planning. Good night, Joe Tan. Uh, have a good weekend as well. Yeah, the thing is, doing it every week is. Um, I just don't want the channel to be EXS for the the next three four months. You know. I mean like obviously you can but obviously when I end the stream the um you can just watch it whenever you're free so I understand that no one will want to watch this every day live cuz you have better things to do like I wouldn't watch myself doing this every day I'm onto the armor part for the feet now. It's getting exciting now. <laughs> Finally getting through the um the annoying bits. But I'll say um in terms of like the blue and the red versions of this kit, definitely prefer the the blue one. Cause the, for the blue one, you also have like red accents, but in the red version, they are also red. So it's just like you have less uh, color separations. So like this part, this one would be red on the blue version as well. But because, actually, let me check. Actually, I'm wrong. 
so yeah, on, on either version, they are just like the same color. But like what I mean is, um, on the blue version, you would get like tiny red accents. But then on the red version, they will also be red, so you get less color separations. Which is a shame. But then if I do decide to do to paint it, then I'll probably paint it blue. Which is funny because why buy the red if you're going to paint it blue? This also brings up an, an, another annoying thing with the uh, blue and red versions. Because the red version took like extra two or three months to release because of like a lockdown in China and everything and I got really frustrated because like I could have just ordered the blue one and have, have it like two months early but instead I had to wait for the hype to die down just to get it because it's red Masby115 says, how late night are you streaming this? I'm in the southwest US and it's 1.30 p.m. here. Um, I'm trying to not get later than sort of like 11ish. So it'll be about an hour and a half later. That's the good thing about having a mostly US audience. that you guys can stay here longer whereas people in Asia they've all gone to bed now that's one of the downsides of um, posting contents in the UK Because if I post it like during the midday in the UK, it will be too late uh, for people in Asia or too early for people in the US. So it's just not really good time to post anything. Like I don't know if you saw that like snapping this thing. Like it, it got so tight into there, like if I were to disassemble it, like... I have to break something. Like, it's, this, this thing is not coming out. feet on this thing are quite tiny though um, if you if you guys have seen the uh, GPO2 the feet of that guy is just crazy but then it's quite funny because the the body of the GPO2 is smaller than the feet so like it's a bit weird proportion wise
Marsby says um, seeing me not having big issues uh, kind of making him regret not getting one. Yeah, I have flashbacks uh, for the Penelope too. But yeah, they have improved quite a lot. Still not perfect by any means, but... It was very painful for the uh, for the Penelope. Oh man! But then this thing, this thing is annoying me. Oh, I went in fine. So like, I have to press really hard with these two in order for this thing to get in. But then I can't really do it. Marsby says, you planning on getting the mechanical GPO-1 that they're making? Um, I don't know. At the moment, I'm not thinking about it because... I don't know if you're aware, but... Um, the GBP, the currency, is currently doing really shit against the uh, dollar, the USD. And I pay in USD, so everything has just become like 15% more expensive just because of the currency alone. And not to mention like other things in the world that is currently making everything very expensive. So it's quite tough for me to justify buying expensive things like mechanical. <laughs> Ah, oh, good question. SKD asks, um, how's the plastic quality? Uh, it's a bit on and off. I think the outer armor is um, quite nice. It's pretty smooth. And uh, it, it doesn't warp very easily or anything. It's not soft. This has been the most annoying part so far. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Eric Parietti says, I'm currently building an MG Providence with the Yuja Lan upgrade, your first resin kit. Yeah, that kit looks really amazing. I really like it.
But getting the uh, base kit at the moment is just ridiculous. I mean, getting any Bandai kit at the moment is just crazy. Jason is going. Uh, thank you. So, thank you for tuning in. Maybe I'll see you again. KD says for enamel paints, since US doesn't import enamel thinner, what solvent do you use to clean the paint? I think enamel thinner um, is basically white spirit or minimal, mineral spirit, whatever you call it in the US. But, um, <clears throat> but that is quite hot for plastic, so... Uh, instead, you could use lighter fluid, which is very common. Hang on. Lighter fluid is um, it's very harmless. What about urethane paint? I think urethane, you just have to clean it with like hot stuff, so like isopropyl alcohol or like lacquer thinner. But then that will just like remove everything, so. And it, it will. Depends on what kind of thinner that might even melt the plastic as well. I don't know if this is very entertaining, just me struggling to put a part together. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear, it's just my cat purring and being quite annoying. Because if he's in my room, he wants to get out. And if he's out, he wants to get in. It's so like, he just can't decide.
just leave it like that for a bit. SKD says, is the red part too tight? Yeah. It's, it's not the red part that's too tight, it's the uh, the inner frame that is not fitting very well, so um, can't get the pegs together. Brian Schaffer says, try throwing it against the wall. Yeah, you know. If they have too many lives, they don't die. Yeah, it's the um, these two parts that are not quite fitted well. I'm tempted to just cut one of the pegs off and then just like glue the rest in because that's annoying me I'm interested though like um where are you guys located if you want to say it I don't think I have anyone in uh, Asia at the moment because <laughs> it's getting too late but anyone in the US and not in the US Brian Schaffer meant uh, throwing the kid, not the cat. <laughs> Have I been exposing myself of uh, abusing my animals? So yeah, this is quite unique. I think this is the first time that Mechanical has done this, but they give you like mini circuit board for like uh, plugging different LEDs in, in sections. So instead of like all the LEDs connecting together, this is just, um, so this one is for the leg and there's like others for the base and whatnot, which is pretty cool. Jiho Tan, you're still here. I thought you went to sleep. It's quite late though. B110.
Mars B115 is an A set, which is Arizona, I think. And Christian is IL. I don't know what IL is. Care to explain? <laughs> Wanted to watch me struggle. I think if anything, this uh, this stream will put you to sleep. So there, there's a reason for watching it, I guess. Illinois. Like to be honest, I have no idea where um, any state is in in the U.S. I know where L.A. is, and that's about it. And and I guess Texas. And maybe the two Dakotas, but like, other than that, I have no idea. But at least I know um, a lot of places outside of the US. <laughs> I think it's, um, it's a, I guess it's a stereotype, like, like people in the US don't know any anything outside of the US. Sam J asks, how is the fitment on parts? Um, quite hit or miss sometimes. Like you have to perform like gymnastics with your fingers sometimes. Like this one. Somehow I have to get all these five parts on here and then put the top piece in. Yeah, I have two cats. I have two cats and they take turn uh, shouting. This is the other one. She's uh, quite shy sometimes. Yep, she doesn't like it. <laughs> Juho Tanzis has been, he's been watching for two hours and I guess your voice wasn't that soothing for me to fall asleep. Is that a compliment or not? <laughs> what? Yep. Yeah. Whoa, Eric says he has 14 cats. That's crazy. So I'm guessing they must be like outdoor, cut, uh, outdoor cats as well. There's no way you're gonna have 14 at, at home all the time. See like, how am I supposed to have five of these things? Secure. Before placing the top part. Can these kits be posed around after painting, says Sam J. 
they, they don't even pose very well before painting so but generally like after painting you don't really want to mess with it just in case you scratch something but yeah already like for these kids you don't want to move around too much even just building it Yeah, but it's quite weird. Some of these uh, grey parts are quite soft, like flexible, kind of like halfway between normal plastic and like PC parts for Bandai kits. What's up? So yeah, I don't know why they are quite soft. So like look at this part. Like it's Yeah, it's soft. Oh yeah, I hope uh, you guys have seen uh, the Exia video that I just put out yesterday. And I hope you enjoyed it. Sam J says, what if you use tape to hold them in place? Um, well, after painting or before painting, um, that will work for loose parts, but like if there's like really tight parts, then moving it too much will just break it. So usually Usually I don't really like move the kits around too much. Ah, oh, this what the hell is this? Thank you, Eric. Yeah, I was really surprised with the um, the conversion kit. It's quite simple. Probably probably simpler than the Barbatos MG that I did. And also hope that you guys have seen um, the new Doctor Strange. I don't know if it's too early to 
to be talking about it. So I won't. And yeah, don't don't spoil it for other people as well. If you haven't seen it, are you planning to? Eric is going out with the dog. He has a dog as well, as well as having 14 cats. It's a bit crazy. I don't understand why these things are flexible. These parts are the um, thrusters for the back of the legs. And it's just unnecessarily finicky. Sam J says more for men, well, more men for building what I'm building right now. Since it's flexible, it'll pop off. By laying down tape, putting parts stuck on tape may be easier for, easier than hovering and assembly. Yeah, but then like if you have tape taped together, then they won't fit onto the other pieces though. So at some point you have to remove the tape. But then actually, I guess can put some blue tack. What? Right. You're being very focal. What do you want? Yeah. 
Uh, Christine says, I enjoyed Doctor Strange too. And I'm curious how it's going to impact the greater MCU. It was a fun watch. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But yeah, again, I don't want to spoil it, but I think they were promising a little bit too much than what they actually gave us. Losing my patience with these, <laughs> but I do want to finish off the um, the entire leg. So, but we are two and a half hours in, which is quite worrying. Because I want to be doing one part each video. And if I can do one part in each video, that would be like about five or six videos. If not, then there will be like more than 10, which is quite a lot. And I don't want to do that. That works slightly better. Put his uh, tiny LEDs facing the right way. This is quite ridiculous, actually. It's like doing gymnastics. <laughs> Man, I'll do this later. Wow. I think it gets less complicated later on, so. That's what I hope, anyway. Sam J says, want to ask advice about painting. Uh, hang on a second. Uh, 
for airbrushing parts of inner frame, spraying lacquer or acrylic the better. For thin but sure covering of parts. I mean, I generally just do lacquer for everything anyway. So that probably didn't answer the question properly. Yeah, I used to do acrylic, but like I moved on because there's just too many troubles with acrylics. You get like um, paint drying on the tip and it's just like paint with peel. Like all kinds of things so it's just like much easier just to switch to lacquer but then I understand that like some people can uh, spray lacquer because like condition like air conditioning and stuff or just condition of the uh, of the of this area I guess But I guess if you're asking that question, then you have the option to do lacquer. Then I would say just do lacquer for everything. Deb Shelburne says, speaking of lacquer paints, I've been trying to find a good spray booth. The generic $150 ones have a combustion warning in regards to lacquers. How do you know if this is true? Um, I mean, I can't really like say really irresponsible things, but like <laughs> the chances of the, um, the chances of the fan sparkling and catching fire with the paint is very low, isn't it? Like you have to be abusing the hell out of your the motor to for it to be sparkling. one of those parts that won't stay up <laughs> so like this one this one is quite loose Yeah, no problem. Um, I mean, if you want, you can just like make your own anyway. The problem with um, the cheaper ones is that um, just the airflow is not that great. So like, and you you end up like it w it would not like perform really efficiently. So it's kind of pointless. Sam J asks if I use ultrasonic cleaner to wash my parts, I'm guessing. Uh, and the answer is no. Just because I find like having 
just using a toothbrush is, is the best way. Because sometimes, uh, like just soaking things in, uh, won't be enough. You have to like physically, uh, you know, like move the move this stuff out. But then only I only wash for resin though. Like if you're not doing resin kits, I unless it's like a third party kit, you don't really need to wash. Even for, for third party kit, you only have to wash if there's like physically some slippery stuff on the surface. Curious to know if there's anyone in the UK actually here. Brian Schaffer says the real question is have you how have you not dropped pieces on the floor? Yeah, I'm just being really careful at the moment But yeah, it, it does happen sometimes and it's very painful It's worse when um, when it's clear parts as well, because because they are clear. When when is drop, when, once you drop them on the floor, they just like camouflage into the carpet or whatever the floor is. I take it no one is uh, currently in the UK.
Worse is a worse is a nozzle from Iwata. Why would you have a nozzle out in the open though? <laughs> Those things are so tiny. Juho Tan, who's still awake, asks, You have cats, right? How do you get fur to stay away from parts? Um, I don't know. I have a carpet in my room. So, um, yeah, the carpet catches all the hair, I guess. <laughs> But like they, they don't usually stick. Anyway, um, you can just blow hair out if they're like on the part or something. But yeah, having a uh, having hairy animals and having carpet is. Um, quite annoying sometimes. <laughs> Brian Schaffer asks, what do you, I think about the Essex Studio 160th DOM? Um, sort of 50 50 because I would prefer I prefer an actual Dom not a Dom tropen
yeah, Geo Tan says here, I have a husky and his fur is always everywhere around my workstation. So even blowing using the airbrush only makes it fly around even more. <laughs> yeah, it's quite different having a dog though. And like husky is even worse, they just... <coughs> yeah, they just shred everywhere. But man, I, I do love huskies. They're so they're so adorable. What? Wow. So this is a tricky part, I've got to like put everything in basically, do all the LEDs and whatnot. Nice, the board doesn't really fit in there. Great. This is going to take a long time. This is like having a surgery. because they're so annoying.
there's nothing inside the holes that um that are holding the LEDs in place. I mean, I could use some like glue or something, but we'll see. Nice. Now I have to do it all over again. Ah, oh, the joy of this kit. Of course it doesn't want to close. <laughs> Why make it so easy?
anything uh, anyone got anything interesting to ask while I'm trying to figure this out part go in here but they don't mention it in the manual oh actually actually that's it's very hard to see yep so i gotta open it now again snapped the wire while I was um, while I was putting the two halves together so this this wire is broken uh, so I have to um, <laughs> have to solder it again if I if I do care but I really don't Geotan S, is your YouTube channel generating good side income? Yeah, I did talk about doing gunpla on YouTube like a while ago, but um, the thing is, you have to be getting like hundred thousand views per per video to actually make good money. So I'm really not making much at all doing Gunpla and especially when I use like official soundtrack from the anime it instantly demonetizes my videos but like but because I'm not earning that much either way like I'd rather just put like actual good music in it So yeah, the answer is no. Ryan says now it goes against the wall. I'm not sure what you mean. And Jesus, 
those guaranteed views and clickbait titles. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a fan of like really sensationalizing um, the titles. You know, like Mecha Gaikotsu would would do. <laughs> I mean, I did that for the AXS bus, like saying it the uh, the worst kit I've ever built, that kind of thing, which I'm not really proud of, to be honest. Since the wire broke, still not sure what you meant, but uh, I'll just have to like resolder it if I do want to, which at the moment I don't really want to. See, I'm just having to like glue everything at the moment. one leg. have to do it all over again. You really should just say part separators to split the parts instead of your hands, lower the risk. Yeah, I just feel like I have more control with my hands. And also I'm just really lazy. Dono asks, Could you copy a duplicate design of 
a 1144 Nightingale legs and feet I saw on YouTube for a commission. That's oddly specific. Do you mean like literally just copying the details and no painting? From God Fingers video. I mean, I'm not sure. I'll have to check like how complicated it is. But like, scribing takes a lot of time, so like, it'll be reflected in the prize as well. And like I said again, that's why I. I don't really do a lot of scribing nowadays because it's just wasting so much time. But yeah, yeah, potentially, but it won't be cheap. Just to let you know. Ah, these things are so annoying. But like, it could potentially be fun because uh, I just hate coming up with my own thing. So I'd I'll, I'll, I'll rather just copy things instead of <laughs> coming up with my own. Yeah, like I said, I have to see how detailed it is. Actually, what I should have done with the wires is I, I should have just uh, like taped them against the wall so that they are not moving around when I put the two halves in. Just to prevent them from getting caught in the middle and breaking. <sighs> this is so annoying. I hope uh, <laughs> I hope it gets a little bit better later. Yeah, I'll get back to you. Sorry for not um, answering earlier. Yeah, I just didn't know what you what you mean by um, when you asked me on Facebook.
Here is attempt number two. Putting everything together. I'm hoping I don't uh, I don't snap anything. Oh, Trinces, I see you getting on well. I've been, sand I've been sanding mine while listening and watching. Thank you for sticking with me for so long. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that you, you have something else to do at the same time and not just watching. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm getting on too well. So I didn't think it would take this long. I think I'm pretty close to finish. Like again, I'm really glad that I um, snapped all the parts out beforehand because that would have added that would have added another two hours on top of this. What was already. Um, Almost three and a half hours. feet Calvin said, some said this kit is a bit overkill, too many things carried on the body. Yeah, I would agree. But then that's, that's the, uh, that's literally what EXS is, isn't it? It's a pun on uh, being excessive. So in a sense that I really like it.
Oh, these pieces are these pieces are so terrible. SKD says even the normal Bandai version of the EXS is already overkill. Yeah, I really like it though, like the uh, the boosters and and whatnot. Man, these things. <laughs> to be like this. Oh, great. So yeah, the quality is very uh, on and off. Some of them is okay. Some are just horrible. Do I plan on painting this guy? In a short term, no. That's why I'm doing this stream. Just because I don't want to go insane. Oh my god. Just like you put one thing, something else falls out. And then you put that thing back in and then another thing pops out. PRR Crew says, you maybe need a 172nd G system Gundam R5 or or diorama that would be epic that'll be my dream yeah the, that mark 5 by g system is very uh very outdated looking though so it'd be really weird to put it against the mechanical SKD says, I admire people who plan on painting these mechanical kits. Yeah, I've seen someone who painted it. And I'm just like, wow. <laughs> Good on you. quite cool. It's a plastic part. It's got some like clear blue, clear blue after it. thing is like yeah it's just hard to hard to coordinate how to paint this 
or any mechanical mechanical kit. It's like there's just so many parts to manage if you do decide to paint it. Yeah, a lot of time just been wasted on trying to put the parts together and failing. Calvin asked how long did it take to sand my DO? Uh, it was very long. Just because, um, yeah, the uh, G system kits like their their resin are have really rough surfaces, and you know that that DO had like really big surface areas, so basically had to like sand two or three times on literally everything. So yeah, a few months would be, I guess, a reasonable amount. I mean, Essex Studio is also quite weird. They have like really random scratches on the surface sometimes. What's weird about Essex Studio is like whenever I order, order the um, first batch, they always come with like missing parts and some parts would be like duplicate so obviously like the quality control is not very nice like the uh, whoever packed the pack the boxes um, don't do the don't do a good job and whenever I contact them they would be like that's impossible and I'm just like what do you mean it's impossible like you think I'm lying or something And it happened to me like two, three times as well. Every time I buy the first batch of a new product, it's very peculiar. Like, I'm sure I'm not the only one. So like, why why is the guy saying like impossible? I'm sure uh, like I'm sure more people are complaining about it. SKD says, I absolutely love your DO build. Always come back and rewatch it. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's one of my favorite builds as well. Just like, it's just so impressive to look at. 
and like it just I just forget about the the process of making it because it was too frustrating. But it's not it's not too bad overall though. Like the inner frame really helped because it was uh, a plastic one. Calvin said, I think they had improved recently. I ordered the heavy arms, everything stay intact, no repeats parts or missing parts. Oh, that's good though. Yeah, it happened to me with the Goof and the Cubalet. And what else? Yeah, because I ordered another goof for someone else as well, and that one also had like weird parts and stuff. And then I, I told him about, I told the guy at the customer service. And then the guy was like, oh, it's impossible to have that many missing parts. I was like, like, it's just a, it's just a weird response to... And for the cubelay, like I actually had like twenty extra parts, like duplicate parts, and then like ten missing parts or something. And then I had to talk to the uh, the GM Dream, the guy who designed it, and then he talked to uh, SX Studio. So that a guy would would be like, okay, I'll re replace it for you or something. So like, it made me really hesitant to get the first batch of their new products. <laughs> yeah, I do order from Taobao directly. Everything is falling off. Richie fifteen says, Does it require a lot of gluing? Uh, supposedly not, but in reality, yes. Just like a lot of things just falls off. A lot of things just fall off, and uh, yeah, it's very annoying if you don't use glue. not sure about this um, these two parts you basically have to like 
go over underneath. Like that doesn't really look very nice for if you're painting it. I'll definitely scratch the hell off the uh, the yellow part. So that just makes me uh, want to paint it less. <laughs> close to finishing gonna get broken <sighs> yeah I didn't think it would be this stressful Trying to speed through it because it's getting late. What I'll do is I'll probably like just do one leg. You know, there's no point in seeing two legs. It's the same thing. And I'll just speed things a little bit.
<clears throat> nice. This is not fitting at all. Interesting. Well, it's looking pretty good, I must say. Calvin asks, what do I do for a living? Uh, I seem to have so much time on kids. Um, yeah, because I do a little bit of commissions. I have... Yes, he's, he's trying to answer it for me. I have like a shop in the UK that sells um, Gunpla stuff. And uh, basically, like doing self employed things, whatever that will pay the bills, you know. Like, um, it's not much, but I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. And this piece likes to pop out. 
look at this. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah, I'm not full time doing commissions though. I would like to be. Um, I don't know if you know uh, Matt Mrosik. He used to do a lot of like Gunpla commissions, but I think he's only into figures these days. But he gets like he, he's full time doing uh, commissions, which is amazing. And I'd love to be in his place, basically. Nice. Very floppy. <laughs> Great. And also not having a life <laughs> is uh, what allows me to do this. I'm only joking, like I, I do have like a little bit of life. <laughs> Where are you based? Are you in Asia or are you in the US? Because isn't it a bit too early for you if you're in Asia? Not much left, I think. Uh... Well, the next part is a bit crazy.
We got some newer viewers in here. Seem to be uh, having some people going out and then going in. So I'm assuming they're new people. And I just really hate doing wires. So annoying. Welcome back, Donald. Wow, so we are four hours into the stream and then uh, Yeah, I was hoping I would already be done by this point. What? But uh, yeah, this is taking so much longer than I hoped. Watching the NBA and you. <laughs> Yeah, at least you have got like more entertaining stuff to watch.
What? Hi Eric, welcome back. Yeah, I wanted to know like about your cats. Are they like are they outdoor cats? Like do they do they just run around most of the time and then just come home once in a while, that kind of thing. <laughs> Yu Wang says, "Our cat, our cat brings us presents." That's quite funny, but like, I don't know. I get really worried because um, I hear a lot of stories about people's cats just like running around all day, and usually they die getting hit by a car. And just like, I just don't want that to happen to mine. Eric says, uh, some choose to live only inside and some of them uh, only come back for food, basically. Yeah, I, I, know, I know a friend of mine who also has cats like that. And it's quite interesting. Like, they're basically just wild cats and they just... But they depend on you for food, that kind of thing. Yuan says, ours guards, uh, ours guards our backyard, he doesn't leave the perimeter. Oh, that's pretty really nice though. I don't know where these wires are supposed to go.
Yeah, you have a dog with a cat as well. Well, you have a dog with 14 cats as well. That must be interesting for the dog. Oh, the cats don't love him. Oh no. Uh, to be honest, I think the legs are probably the uh, the hardest part, so I'm not doing myself any favor by doing it first. So the next few parts will probably be easier to do. I'm guessing. I'm hoping. Which airbrush do I have? I have the Mr. Color uh, Procon Boy. I think it's 289, which is a pretty standard uh, airbrush from Mr. Color. It's really good though. Like, I think I need a, a new one again, and I'll probably buy the same one. So where about in uh, northern Italy are you?
<laughs> Eric says, never tried a Procon boy, but seems a good boy. Yeah. <laughs> it is a good boy. Don't know, ask. Uh, I heard that when painting camouflage, we should paint the light color first. Does it matter? Uh, yes, it does matter very much. Uh, and just like not even in camouflage, but like painting in general, you want to have the light color down first because uh, the covering power of lighter color is not very good so it's easier if you lay down like lighter colors and then go darker because darker colors uh, cover the underneath colors pretty well my cat is being annoying again Eric says I live in Bergamo, cloudy and rainy night. Yeah, pretty much the same here. <laughs> it's basically raining every day. Um, Depp Shalburn says, wow bro, the, sh the stream is still, still going. Crazy, but it was fun. It's the opposite actually, it's been really frustrating. <laughs> and I'm just trying to get one leg done. And it's proving very difficult. I think this is the last bag though, so. After this, I can go to sleep. Put myself out of mystery. <laughs> and the last part is only the armor part, so it should be fairly straightforward. Eric asks for priming, do I use Procon? Yeah, I use the same airbrush for everything. I mean, apart from like, if you get like an airbrush with a bigger needle, there's no other reason for like getting another airbrush really.
I am very confused right now. Turns out I've been doing this backwards. Eric says, I love, I just love the airbrush like people love cars. To me, it's the, it's the piece of ingenuity to use and collect. And like my uncle did, I would give it to, I would give it to person when I stop it. Not sure what you mean by the end, but uh, yeah, I do, I do know what it's like to. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really like airbrushes too. Oh great, another broken wire. <laughs> Should I just not bother with wires anymore? I'm just so frustrated. Start building your donate yours. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, Deb, I think that's just the <laughs> just bad design in general. Um, like they should put really like deep grooves for the wires to go and set like they just float around in, in between and you just kind of have to like and you, you just don't know where they are when you put the two halves together and just like <sighs> frustrating when you know that they, they are broken it's not a big deal to resort it though just uh, just a matter of getting everything out again yeah I don't know if you can tell I'm getting uh, more and more <laughs> less motivated to uh, airbrush it but the broken uh, wires just makes me less determined to work on it 
just want to like snap build it and then just forget about it. Great. Big flashes on these taps. Nice. Pieces. I've got an Iwata HPCS and it's really amazing. Been using cheap airbrushes for two years and been frustrated with them until I got an Iwata. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do get what you mean. Once you go like, once you get some uh, reputable brand ones, they just feel so much better. Getting close, guys. Getting close.
Don't you just love it when you're like trying to fit things in and more things fall out? Yep, pretty much Donald. House of Cards. <laughs> Man, I should have picked uh, an easier part to start on. These legs are horrible. <laughs> must be from must be 115 says something tells me the legs are as good as it going to get it's only going downhill from now uh yeah i hope not because i'm just gonna give up if it is <laughs>
Ah, that looks okay. Taco Tuesday, love the name. How is the kit? Has there been any improvement or does it still have the mechanical fun times? Yeah, it definitely still has the mechanical fun times. And the mechanical not fun times sometimes as well, which I'm having at the moment. Right, last part for one leg. Here we go. Um, I'm not sure what we're supposed to do with the wires. Yeah, here we go. Deb said, I man, at least you'll be the first one to showcase the build process of a mechanical kit. And best of all, the end result will look fantastic, especially next to your other builds. Yeah, I'm not sure about it looking really good. But, um, yeah. The legs are usually the most tedious part of most gun plus, except like the RE100. The torso and head are always the most fun part for me. Yeah, I agree. I don't know why I picked the legs. I think because for mechanical things, I um, everything connects to each other before you can build something else or, or something like that. 
So I just thought it would be most sensible to just have the legs first so I can have everything on top. But yeah, it's definitely been quite painful for sure. <laughs> and yeah, it's some broken wires that I have to get into fixing. But anyway, looking good. One leg, well, one and a half leg. Took me four hours and 40 minutes. So, uh, thanks for tuning in. I'll probably uh, do the next one tomorrow. And I'll do something easier. And I'll also finish the other leg in the meantime. But yeah, thanks for tuning in. Uh, it's very good time for bed now, so I'll say good night. I hope you enjoyed the stream, and I'll see you in the next one. Right, how do I? Uh... Yep, got it.